Hey everybody, this is the tutorial video for how to make the uh, alternate version of the diagonal cube. So to build the shape, you're going to start out in one of two ways. Either with um, two sets of stacked rings of six, or with one set of stacked rings of six and one set of stacked rings of nine. Um, and the difference between these two ways of starting out is that if you start out with the two rings of six, you'll get a cube uh, like this one, where the corners are uh, slightly different. So these end in three magnets, these end in one magnet, and then on the other side, one magnet and three magnets. So that's what happens if you do it this way, which is good for some things. But if you want all the corners to be identical, then start off with uh, the six and uh, the nine stacked rings. So this is the way I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's exactly the same, except you substitute these in otherwise. So the way that you start doing this is you uh, take your stacked rings of nine and you uh, cut them into uh, four stacks. Then you take each one and you pinch the top down into a triangle like that. So, just like that. Do that for all four of them. Then you're going to want to take four single magnets and uh, fill in the uh, holes in these triangles really quick, just like that. And uh, you wouldn't need to do that part if you were doing it the other way with tubes of six because there's no hole to fill there with one magnet. You wouldn't need to do that part. Anyways, you take three of these and you attach two of them together like that. Then you take a third one and do like that. And you do the same thing with the other way. Now what you want to do is you want to take a series of single magnets and put them down into here so that they kind of fill up this hollow tetrahedron and make it solid. And they really like to stick to the sides and don't go down the way they should. So if you just take like a pencil or something, you can push that magnet down in there, make it go where you want it to go, like that. And so then you take more of these single magnets and go ahead and fill this whole thing up. And for doing it this way, you need um, 10, I think, yeah, 10. Whereas if you were doing it with the uh, stacked rings of just six, you'd only need four because there'd be one layer less. So go ahead and fill this up. So you have this. Then you take this last one and you put it down on top of this. And you want to make sure that the point of this triangle is going to kind of fit the tetrahedron underneath here. Because it's kind of, you want to kind of put it this way, but it needs to be that way. So put it on like this. And at this point you kind of have to put your fingers on all four of these and kind of push in and make sure that uh, all of these edges are touching together because at first they don't really want to go, but then eventually you push on them a little bit and it'll click together and stick, just like this. Um, and you'd have a similar thing if you'd done this with uh, rings of six, except instead of uh, you know being four magnets wide here with three little holes, it would be three magnets wide with two little holes. Um, so now what you want to do is take your extra stacked rings of six and cut them up also into uh, four stacks. And uh, these need to uh, be, when they go down, they should be the opposite polarity of these. So you take the top of them and pinch these into triangles as well. 
And these triangles go right down on this place where these three tubes come together. Just like that. And it's actually a very strong connection that really clicks together quite hard. So you do that with all four of them. And you're here. Now you have these long gaps in between here where there's three little divots. So what you want to do is take single magnets and fill those in. And each one will take three. Just like that. And go ahead and do that to all of the little uh, holes. Okay, and that's all of them. Now what you want to do is take a card and go ahead and cut off the extra bits of rings. So just like that. And then with these, just like that. And there will be a little bit of a gap there. So go ahead and cut all those off. And this is the shape that you're left over with. You want to take um, more single magnets, or you can do it with just a little triangle like this, if you want, and just fill in each triangle face like that. And so you end up with this. Now what you want to do is you want to um, take a, kind of a chain of magnets and you want to make some uh, a single ring of six and smash it down into triangles like that. And there are these four like large flat triangles around here and one of these should go on each of those. And so you end up here. And this is about the most basic, the smallest, I guess, diagonal cube that you can uh, make with uh, this method. You can't quite make them as small as you can with the other method. But um, from here, you can keep expanding them outwards pretty much indefinitely. It's a really strong shape, and I don't know how big it would have to get to uh, not be able to support its weight, but it would have to be far more magnets than I have. So... Um, to make this larger, what you want to do is um, take a chain and, and uh, you want to lay it down so that it goes like that on there. And it'll drop right into the little divots there on both sides. Now, what you kind of think about doing is like continuing to, you know, and kind of make a ring around here. But actually the way this ends up working is that these two sides need to go the kind of opposite direction to what they would do if they were actually forming a ring. So that goes down like that rather than the other way. And that's the same. Now you can just take little things of two and just kind of mash them in there. Um, they pretty much change polarity to be what they need to be when you put them in. So you don't need to worry too much at that point about getting them the right way. But if you can, if you really want to worry about it, worry about lining them up so that they're the same polarity as the uh, line that's immediately like outside of that. And so that's how you add on one square face there. And you want to do that to the other five faces.
and so you end up with this shape. And again, what you can do here is um, add more magnets on to the uh, triangular faces here. Although this time, rather than making the squashed rings of six, you need to start out with just a straight ring of six and then put corners on it and fill it in like that. So you can go ahead and do that to all of the other triangular faces on this. Well, actually no. To, uh, you want to do it to four of them that kind of form a tetrahedron first, then you can come back and do the others. It's a little easier that way. And uh, once you've done those four, then you can do these other four. It's a little bit easier that way. And also it's uh, good to note that while these all have um, polarity about these corners, the uh, ones that are currently the smaller ones are all the same polarity as, each, polarity as each other, whereas these ones that are currently larger are the opposite polarity, the other way around, counterclockwise or clockwise or whatever. Um, so, um, it is a little bit, you know, I would prefer it wasn't that way, but that's how it is. So, um, go ahead and add more magnets onto here. Okay, and now you've added those corners on. And if you wanted to keep making this bigger, you could start adding more magnets on to the uh, square faces, and then more onto the triangles, and more on the squares, and kind of alternate back and forth between doing that. And this thing will just get larger and larger. But uh, that's not any different than what I've already been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this cube off and stop the video. Um, so the last thing you need to do to finish it off is to put the corners on, which is, you know, just in this case, it's three magnets. Um, if we had stopped one level earlier or gone one level further, th these would have all ended with one magnet. It goes, as you add another layer on uh, concentrically, the uh, type of corner changes every time. So I kind of like the three magnet corners better. They're more stable. They don't move around as much. These one magnet corners tend to be really kind of finicky, and I prefer these ones, they don't move as much. So go ahead and take little triangles and finish off all the corners. And that is it finished, the uh, alternate way to build the diagonal cube. And like I said before, um, this has, instead of being axially polarized with the magnets going around the uh, axis there, they are uh, polarized around each corner. So that is uh, this shape.